Hey, I'm Nick Cathalon Gamer. Welcome back to FM 23, Newton Heath, episode 34. We continue on with the season. We're up against the last place team, or not last place, but one of the relegation teams in the league, Dagenham and Redbridge. Should be an easy win, but through squad rotation, especially as we've had a very, very, very busy schedule for the last you know month plus uh, of the season, We've been suffering through a lot of things, and right now we are seeing a very serious rotation of our defense for this match. Oliver Wright is in. Miles is on the bench. Heggie says injured, but he's sick. He's got a week and a half type flu bug that's going to see him out for a little bit, so he's hit pretty hard by that one. And then Wiggett, uh, the one player who I actually said, hey, yeah, sure, okay, let, let's do this. When he approached me saying, I'm not getting any playing time, help me out, coach, I, I said yes. And so we're going to give him a start here. Uh, we'll throw him in on the bench a couple of times and, you know, see if he gets a few minutes here and there to keep him happy for the season as he is kind of our fourth man of the center back pairings and all it takes is one injury to, to really need that. But then also Pierre in because both Wilson and Tunnicliffe have been playing a lot They've got that heavy match load. We need to back off on that. Pike needs a break. Brooks just got a break, but he still needs another one. But Pike, I, that's enough rotation for now. Uh, we're already down to one of our regular four starters. Brooks, okay, fine. He's been starting for a while and doing fine, but still. Uh, Sarsavik and Smallwood in front of them, though, should definitely help keeping both of those guys out there. And then on top, trying not to change things but Shaq Ford is somebody who's desperate for a break he's had one match off in a month with a lot of you know twice played weekly sets we had three in eight days in one of those stretches we had was it that five matches in 11 days that was he had one of those off that's the only match he's had off He's exhausted. He needs a break. So Ollie Palmer's getting the start today. Ford will be back on top next time. So let's hope that Palmer, who has broken his streak of not scoring, which, by the way, he is five matches in with us, having got his first goal. But he had gone 18 at Wrexham prior without scoring a goal before he left them. So that was 23 matches without a goal before he finally scored that's that's bad that's really bad but maybe that was feeling a little more like a curse i didn't know how bad of a streak he was already on uh, when he came to us hopefully with the uh, ball in the back of the net next time he's going to be a little more confident now and can you know start a streak the other direction five two I'll take that, especially when you look at the shots and the on-target. We got five goals from six shots on target. Wright only made two saves. That's worrying. He is the young backup that we are hoping to develop. But the problem with developing goalkeepers right now is we don't have a goalkeeping coach. My character is the one doing it, and he's got like a 2-1-1 in the goalkeeping areas. He's pretty garbage at it. The two Ollies grab four goals for us in this one with Palmer and Tanner each getting a brace plus Ola. So the the Ola Ollies. Meanwhile, Eastley grabs a one goal road victory against 23rd place York. And there's a real drop off on the bottom two teams here with York and Dorking, you know, miles behind even Dagenham and Redbridge, who we just beat ourselves. Now, goal differential, you know, all three of those teams are struggling, but. Uh, for Eastley to scrape by 1-0 on the road for that one. Unlucky for us. They, they're they keeping pace. 28 matches played of a 46-match season. So we've got 18 left to go. That's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of games left to be played. Uh, Seven-point lead, not much. Further seven points to Carlisle. Now that's starting to feel pretty good. 14 points with 18 to play. You're starting to look at the, those guys, the Carlisles, the Knotts Counties, the Yeovils being just barely in it, but Barnet, Boston United, 23 points behind with 18 to play. They're not going to reach us. We, we've still 
only lost twice this season. We have a fair number of draws. I mean, we, we've had nine non-wins and 19 wins. So, you know, one out of three is a non-win for us. We're going to drop some points here and there, but we're not dropping enough for, you know, like Barnett and below. There's no way they're catching us. We've definitely not won the league yet, though, especially with East League uh, coming pretty hard at us. That brace, of course, was the first two league goals that Palmer scored as, you know, the, the one that bucked the trend was the FA Trophy uh, goal that he scored. So uh, good to see that he's, you know, finally getting something going there because that's now, what, eight appearances for us? Ten, actually, in all competitions. So that was ten for us. I, I suppose it wasn't 18 with Wrexham, right? If discount the one we just did. Uh, that was nine previous of the 23. So it was 14 at Wrexham, nine for us. Either way, though, that was that was quite a while. It was quite a while. And XG-wise, now he's starting to close in a little bit as he's at three and a half. And at least at the moment, it is looking like he does have something going, right? Just like I was talking about, doesn't score in ages, and now he grabs two in a short period of time. January has actually been a busy month for us on clearing out players a little bit. A little bit. Three. Harrison Neal, you already knew about from the last one, as we sent him out on a 10K deal to Exeter. But Matty Lund out on a free. That was our vice captain. And Danny Cashman. Uh, both of those guys were sitting in our U21s just occupying space. Cashman, we, we got a little bit of cash for just about 6K on that one as we you know approach the end of the month but that thins out a little bit of the problematic players that were upset about not uh, getting any time and as playing time has been you know one of those rising issues of late uh aaron pierre i, I could see is just behind my face cam he's got 11 starts nine appearances off the bench with a 7.24 average rating a couple of assists to go with it so he's getting plenty of time uh, but he is a little concerned about his playing time. I'm not sure exactly what his agreed upon was on the contract, but we just, just signed a new deal for him. And so now as a squad player, I don't think he'll be concerned any longer. That should take care of that as he's accepted a lesser role than what he had. Uh, Leston Hughes is concerned about his playing time, but with five starts and eight appearances off the bench, it's just about enough to keep him going and knowing that pike is very much in need of a rest hughes is going to get the start in the next one anyway and, and that should uh, help with that issue uh, richards is concerned but his one appearance he was terrible he was absolutely terrible in that game his rating uh, really didn't speak up to as bad as it was but wiggett yeah not happy not happy with his first start and six substitute appearances uh, he should be a little less upset now after getting that start if we can get him a couple appearances off the bench i think he'll feel a little bit better going forward uh, oliver wright's happy that was his second start of the year uh, whitaker is concerned and whitaker is already somebody that barely on the fringes i mean what is his he's a fringe player anyway so uh Concerned, but not overly like ticked off. Uh, Harry Wallace is somebody who is better than he gets credit for, but he doesn't really fit in enough to the system to to be warranting time. And so I feel bad for the guy because he's he's got really good morale, but he's had one appearance off the bench. Is it for us? Uh, but you can see a lot of guys are getting some really consistent time. And then, of course, at the top, you know, the, the two new faces are, you know, coming in with lower numbers. Smallwood, good so far. Remember, his, his first appearance was FA Cup, Aston Villa, really difficult to ask, and only half, half a game for that. He's had three starts already since then. But at his age, he's already in need of a rest now. Uh, I do need to get him kind of placed as our new left defensive mid or left anchor. And good bad news with the Smallwood Sarcevic link up matchup now in the midfield. Combined, they're a little slow, but combined, they're an excellent combination. I 
part of me would rather have them rotating through the same spot and have one slower player and one faster player next to them just to counter that having two slower players does can can leave you vulnerable in that area but two players that are just solid side by side it's tough to beat that at this level so i think ultimately they will do well on the road eighth place boston united toughest match of kind of this little stretch of the season but fortunately we also have a week so we get a little bit more time get that recovery bring that match load down and it's already to the point where nobody's on high still have some mediums still want to do a little bit of squad rotation to really ease that off plus help with you know those guys who need some starts whitehall in for sarsavik as sarsavik picked up a minor injury he actually cleared he passed his fitness test but at his age i think the injury risk playing him so soon after a minor injury probably is going to be a great risk so i'm going to give him this one off 1-1 for this one. Uh, Not a very dominating performance. We did lead. They scored fairly late, 77th minute, to get back into this one. Only three shots on target. Heggy, at least back from his injury, but that is points dropped. It looks like Eastley have dropped points as well, at least. Uh, As have, let's see, Carlisle lost. Eastley, yeah, draw with Hartlepool. Okay, well, that's good. It was an opportunity for us to push up, but our next match is like we have York next at home. That's that's an easy one, and yeah, I'm feeling confident, but would have been nice to get three points. Quite a few draws in there, but that is 17 unbeaten. In the There's just how strong Pike has been compared to other fullbacks in the league. He is just dominating especially in the progressive passes and the progressive dribbles uh, or at least dribbles looking really good he brings that ball forward well for us and then does what he needs to do in other departments we've reached the stage where we have more money in the account than what we owe so we finally have no net debt and that is now a you know great opportunity for us to have a look again and see what's next i haven't asked for anything since uh early december it's been almost two months so i think it's it's a good opportunity it also has been a little while now since uh we got our latest training uh, facility upgrade i'm thinking about doing that one but i think part of this is going to depend as we're now seen as a rich club part of this is going to depend on what do we even have going on right now what have we requested lately uh, yeah, it's not a given on what to ask for at the moment. Now, we're already in the progress of improving the youth facilities. That was done in December, 20th of December for that one. So coaches allowed. We already increased that recently. Our B team, of course, our U21s was granted uh, in the fall. And we improved training facilities But that was half a year ago. But that was just completed in December. So it's awfully early to ask about training facilities right now. But it's worth a thought. Improving youth recruitment would definitely be an option. And realistically, that's kind of the next thing in that rotation of targets. So we're going to ask about improving youth recruitment. But we might try for the uh, facilities as well. All right, so we had pushed this up one level. It took quite a few times requesting before we finally got it. I think a lot of this came down to club reputation. We finally had enough club reputation where we did get that first level. But they're not wanting to, to get us into the second level territory. Now, I do think it did take us talking to them right it it didn't just happen automatically but i do believe for now that the club reputation is just gonna continue being a problem if we look at it yeah we're we're still only at 1252 we're still not even at sixth tier level not quite sixth tier level where we're potentially on the verge of getting out of the fifth tier into the fourth so 
you know, there there was a lot of levels to, to get through to get up to actual sixth tier level, but we, we've got quite a ways to go still uh, at, at this stage. I decided to speed things up and took a one week vacation with a couple matches during that stretch. The first one, York, 2 0 victory, no problem. But then we have a match suspension for one of our forwards. We have an injury that's going to see one of them out for a while. And then I get this message our chairperson, Jim Ratcliffe, looking to step aside in the near future. That means. You know, all those resources, all those funds we have are potentially going to go away. Uh, I think he's looking to cash in. And then we go goalless with Yeovil. So without a couple key guys on top, looks like Whitaker got in uh, as a start, which I suppose makes sense considering how many injuries we had. Uh, but that's points dropped. Fortunately, we're still up by 7 with 31 played, so 15 to go now, 29-2, and two, 7 points ahead of Eastley, and Carlisle's getting actually even further back than they were, so they're 16 down. They didn't have a very good stretch in that either. Uh, Knotts County is, is actually closer than they are now, or almost in the, the gap that they had. Uh, they have closed up a little bit. So Sarsavik has picked up a yellow card suspension for that next one. Ollie Tanner, the one who picked up the injury, he is out for six to seven weeks. A lower, bra lower back stress fracture uh, suffered in training uh, about five days ago. Donisian, still out for anywhere from three weeks to seven. And Heggy, still not quite, but he's just about fully recovered from his illness unfortunately we couldn't grab a goal in that one as we had one and a half goals worth of xg i mean we clearly were due one for that matter they just about should have had one as well fifth round fa trophy means there are eight teams left in the competition so we're really getting down to it this is quarterfinals palmer is the man on top today with Shaq Ford playing underneath him. And here is Ford trying to set up Palmer with that one, but Palmer just does not get on the same page as Whitehall recovers the ball and dribbles right on in very, very easily right through the defense. We carve and we are carving our way through them at the moment. He's clearly not the player that uh, some of his teammates are is having his way with them at the moment. Ford goes pretty close, but that gets blocked. Ton of cliff coming in. Uh, we got Pierre on a start today. Ola keeps it in. That's deflected, but Palmer, oh, that's a goal kick. That was off the crossbar, not off the keeper's hands. Uh, so that was very close for uh, Palmer on there. Right. Pierre already on a yellow card inside the first 10 minutes. That's harsh. Uh, he may not finish out the game like that then. I was trying to give Wilson a break as he's had a heavy load of games of late, uh, not getting any days off. Figured he deserves one to try to avoid the injury bug, the injury bug that, you know, I take one week of vacation and we lose some guys. I was an offside play there, uh, but it's been all us so far, but this is a dangerous one. Uh, really poor clearance. They're going to get another chance at it. And Lapala by intercepts, starts counter, hits Palmer. Palmer hits Ola on the run. Ola's going to get a real chance here. Beats a keeper, but curls that the wrong direction, basically. He needed to outside of the foot curl it back curled it out and he curled it well out whitehall nearly commits a penalty on a missed diving tackle there but uh, we get away with it for the Apollo by crosses instead of carrying that in when he's already got his man beat and three steps on him he needed to just bring that in smallwood also on a yellow card now oh palmer <laughs> should have scored there needs to place that one a bit better that was a bit of an easy save for the keeper plenty of open goal keepers on the line and Palmer's got a good enough angle to place that anywhere he wants he places it straight up the keeper keeper barely saves it Ola nice Palmer there it is now he scores fifth of the season so he's, he's starting to pile up the goals a little bit and I'm getting nervous about these yellow cards especially after what we saw with you know Aston Villa Ola. Oh, man. Close. Tough angle. Good shot. Good save from the keeper, too. Another corner. 
right to Palmer. Keeper this time comes out, grabs it out of the air. For him, gratefully. For his team, gratefully. For us, disappointingly. That's okay. Ola lays it off for Ford. Ford, a bit high, leans back a little too much, gets underneath it. Ball always rising on that one. Pike. Apollo by finds Whitehall inside. Lays it off though. Smallwood finds Palmer. Over the top for Ola, but it curls out a bit much. Smallwood inside to Whitehall. Ends up taking the shot in the end anyway, as he lacked other options. Nobody was really moving for him. Great interception from Ola. Hits Brooks on the overlap, but he's going to peel it back inside as it was covered well. Great run from Ford. Really good defense. One on three, but he just about got that one off. Can't quite get that to Palmer. Pike gets it to Whitehall. Plenty of space. Comes in. Couldn't make up his mind. Clearly wanted to pass. The other team begged him to shoot, and in the end, he passed it to the keeper. <laughs> Brooks, free kick. Whoa, what a save. Kovacevic, brilliant save on that one. Almost halftime. It should be 3-0 by now. In fact, XG, it should be 3-0 by now. How are we not putting this game away? Ton of cliff. Good recovery. Pike over the top for Ola again. He'll keep that in. He gets the cross. Lapalo by. Can't get much power on that. And straight down the middle with that header. Tunnicliffe, good header there. And we want to obviously keep going. Put this game away. Dangerous start to the second half, though, but Smallwood intercepts. Pierre back and forth, back and forth, trying to play out of trouble without doing anything to actually ease the pressure. <laughs> Pike in space. Attacks the space and then lays it off for Apollo by who hangs onto it too long. Pierre wins that header. Ford gives it away though. And this is their biggest chance of the day. That was uh, not good. Brooks. Great run from Ola. Great pass from Brooks. Corner kick. Smallwood. Again. 50 minutes played. Subs need to start happening on those two guys with their long-term yellows. There you go, Whitehall. Third goal of the season. Curls that one into the corner. I don't know if you saw it while I was making the sub there. Smallwood transferring play to Whitehall. Whitehall just sucks Niarco in. And as Niarco dives for it, pulls the ball away from him. And then just drives in into the space. And yes, we do want to make that sub. We're going to do uh, Smallwood as well as Lapala by picks up a yellow card from over celebrating. I don't know. I don't know what that came from. That ball for Palmer, not good enough. Palmer probably wasn't going to outrun him anyway. That's a good run. That's a good chance. That's the crossbar. Okay, Smallwood, Smallwood, Smallwood. I do not have a defensive mid. Do not have a defensive mid. Do I have Richards? Brooks can play defensive mid. Ford. Oof. Needs to do better on that. That was a terrible shot. Uh, let's swap those two. 20 minutes played. Let's go balanced. And just light time wasting is all. Go ahead and play for set pieces to shorten things up. And see this puppy out. Listen. Heads that away. Pike picks it up. And let's see. LaPaula by, of course, but who, who do I have on my bench? Oliver Wright, Hercules, Hughes, maybe Pike, Hughes. Yeah, he's tired. Last sub. Let's, let's wait a few minutes to make that last sub. So just in case, injury-wise, Tuttlecliffe, Ola. Nice. Richards. That's not Richards fault. And that's actually a decent recovery. Better from him. Second appearance from him. And doing okay. Ford is really struggling to hang on to the ball today. Pike. Nice. Finds Ford. Apollo by. Pike. Ahead to Ford. Ford. Great run into space here. A really nice pass too. That was a nice pass. Pike deflected. Out for the corner. It was not off Palmer. That was off the defender. Brooks takes this corner, and now we can oh, start thinking about that sub. Palmer, 
This time wins that header, but it was a bit deep, and so he doesn't get a, a lot. Ford, again, into the space, but again, the defense gets a piece of it. Whitehall, Brooks, inside to Ola, deflected. There's no offside there. How was that offside? Yeah, okay. Uh, remove, I didn't want to remove that one. Okay, counter-pressing with a two-goal lead. We've already gone balanced. Palmer apparently was onside there. That was close. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't get the sub there for Hughes for Pike, but that's okay. It happens. Richards did okay in his short time in. Much better performance from him, but also it was dorking, and we had control of it there at the bottom of the league. Totally dominated. 36 shots. We should have had a lot more than two goals in this one. Either way, it was still comfortable. And we continue on into the final four. That is the semifinals upcoming for the FA Trophy. So uh, we are one game away from getting a shot at Wembley. But for us, playing at home in front of this crowd every... Well, not this crowd. This crowd is in our crowd. This was Dorking's crowd. But playing in front of our crowd... Well, there's our crowd over there. Playing in front of our crowd for every home match... Yeah, it's not a big deal uh, playing at Wembley. We're used to the big crowds. We thrive with the big crowds. Either way, it'd be nice to get our first hardware outside of a non-league trophy. It's still a non-league trophy, but it's, it's a slightly higher rated trophy. Though, winning the league fifth tier, I think that might be a little higher rated than the FA trophy itself. Higher rated than the one we won last year taking the sixth tier that is going to do it for this episode though we are pushing into the later stages of the season of course we still have one to two matches left of the fa trophy but otherwise it's all league matches from here and yeah with what 15 to go 14 to go we are you know very much in the last phase i'd say we've got about two episodes left for the season as we're going to try to push a little bit faster through those unless the drama picks up and suddenly you know the gap disappears it's at seven we've been wanting to get it to nine for a while and we can't seem to get there we drop points every so often but luckily Eastley keeps dropping points at about right about the same rate so we've been hovering right there in that same zone of six to seven points ahead that's going to do it for this one though i'm decathlon gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there and bye for now